Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the 2021 Wine Harvest Commemorative Event. Jean Nordier is your Master of Ceremonies for the evening. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight is a celebration, and specifically a celebration of the South African wine industry. On the 2nd of February 1659, Jan van Riebeek wrote in his diary, Jeden is goede lof van de kaaps en drijven de eerste maal wijn gepast. Directly translated in English, it means Today, praise be to God, wine was pressed for the first time from Cape grapes. This means that the South African wine industry today is 362 years old. Um, it's, truly a, it's truly a celebration if you take into account that no other wine industry in the world know their date of inception. So we are celebrating this moment in our heritage. When we say we celebrate the South African wine industry, we mean celebrating the whole wine industry. Geographically, from the Orange River, the Western Cape, the Southern Cape, and even those few farms up there in KZN. We celebrate all levels of the industry. The farm workers, the vineyard workers, the cellar workers, the viticulturalists, the winemakers, the primary producers, the retailers, the distributors, and most importantly, the consumer. This year we are making a special effort to reach the consumer and inviting them to join us in this celebration. Our long-term aim is for the consumer to also make a diary entry in their diaries on the 2nd of February, like Jan van Riebeek, to celebrate this occasion with the wine industry. Tonight we would also like to celebrate the achievements of the people working in the wine industry. And we will award people that have, over the years, made a huge contribution to the wine industry. Having spelled out the purpose of the evening tonight, I would like to call on Dr. Ernest Messina, the chairperson of the Groot Constantia Trust, to do the official welcoming. This year, the wine industry and all its partners gather in very different circumstances. For the last nine years, Groot Constantia was the site of this annual celebration in person. Usually, the atmosphere was filled with anticipation, excitement and hearty interactions. And here we are meeting virtually. This is by no means a statement with sadness or regret. We have to accept that throughout history, pandemics have had huge and devastating impacts on societies, communities and on individuals in a multitude of ways. What we currently therefore experience is fundamentally no different. Former generations have survived and even thrived, and so will we. So ladies and gentlemen, colleagues and friends, lovers of wine from around all corners of our beloved country and the world, the Board of Groot Constantia is indeed honoured to welcome you all warmly and most sincerely to the 2021 Wine Harvest Commemorative Function. In the midst of an adverse global situation, this event is unique and will be t a talking point well into the future. One significant outcome of this format is the fact that so many more people can be a part of it. This offers a wonderful opportunity for a broader sense of awareness and connectedness brought about by the prevailing separation and barriers. We have so much in common and this annual event is a modest attempt to bring us closer together as an industry 
and partners. It is perhaps now more than ever before important for all of us to find new ways to tangibly craft a more meaning, meaningful future, especially in these circumstances. In striving to co-create a common future, we should be inspired and driven by the ideal of, yes, what we do for ourselves. More importantly though, what do we do for others? We are very fortunate to have a harvest this year. We cannot simply take it for granted. The symbolic blessing of the harvest is therefore an expression of our gratitude for a number of reasons. Elements of nature, the soil, sun, wind and rain, human intervention through creative and artistic minds, as well as hearts beating with passion, willing working hands, and the divine intervention of our Creator. All of these have aligned and come together to produce Harvest 2021. We have indeed reason to be filled with gratitude and to celebrate. This event is also about commemoration. We have to relive, review, renew and share the narrative of the wine industry in South Africa with many more of our fellow citizens. Many of us, sadly though, remain ignorant, uninformed and often miseducated. A great leader once said, ignorance is always afraid of change. We all have a responsibility and in fact a moral obligation to address and turn ignorance around about our industry. Two cases in point. One. There are still many who do not know who owns Rittgenstadt. Secondly, this year is 200 years since Napoleon died on the island of St. Helena. On his deathbed, he requested to enjoy the wine from Rittgenstadt, which he so dearly loved. We invite you to familiarize yourself with the true stories. Going forward, we have to make sure that the complete narratives be told about all the contributions of our industry. In this way, all contributors who helped and continue to help shape and build the industry will be acknowledged, valued, heard and be seen. So in conclusion, we want to welcome and at the same time congratulate those recipients of awards tonight for their contribution to the industry, giving of themselves, their talent, their time and their treasure. We congratulate and thank them for what they and thousands of others do and have done over the centuries. We acknowledge all of those who have made positive and constructive contributions. So let us pool our resources and our energy and continue to work towards a shared and more representative future for our industry. A future in which we will be able to weather the storms far more united and prepared. We must also remain mindful that there, remain mindful that there is indeed strength in diversity. So let us endeavor to live up to and model for all to see and feel our country's national motto, namely, Ke e kara ke. Those who are different come together as one. We invite you to join us as we move forward to pause, ponder and reflect on where we are as an industry at this juncture and especially where we should be, then to dedicate or rededicate ourselves to play our part in building a legacy worthy of celebration and pride for generations to come. Such individual and collective actions will most certainly enable future generations to harvest 
healthy and amazing fruits of all of our efforts. In the final analysis, it is not so much about us, but what we do that will count and be remembered. As the Groot Constantia Board, we once more welcome you most heartily. We wish you well. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the wine industry is dependable on nature. Sometimes nature gives you drought, gale force winds, floods, but most of the time it gives you perfect conditions to produce heavenly wines. This year we have seen that it's not only the livro virus that causes the wine industry problems, but also a human virus that can cause havoc. There's a lot that we can control but we cannot control nature. And on that note, I would like to call on Reverend Desmond Mayer of the United Reformed Church in Kulunov to do a blessing on the new 2021 harvest as well as on the industry. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this beautiful estate of Groot Constantia and the blessing of the harvest. The gospel reading or the scripture reading is from Psalm chapter 46 and I'm going to read from the Good News Bible. God is our shelter and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. So we will not be afraid even if the earth is shaken and mountains fall into ocean depths. Even if the seas roar and rage, and the hills are shaken by the violence, there is a river that brings joy to the city of God, to the sacred house of the, old, of the Most High. God is in that city, and it will never be destroyed. At early dawn, He will come to its aid. Nations are terrified, kingdoms are shaken. God thunders and the earth dissolves. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come and see what the Lord has done. See what amazing things He has done on earth. He stops wars all over the world. He breaks bows, destroys spears, and sets seals on fire. Stop fighting, He says. And know that I am God, supreme among the nations, supreme all over the world. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, we come to you today amidst a very difficult and challenging time for the world our country and the wine industry in particular. It is a time of so many losses, a time where so many people have lost their lives, a time where so many businesses are at risk of being closed, a time where so many have lost their jobs and income, a time where so many opportunities are lost forever. But you, Lord, teach us as your children to put our trust in you in times of trouble and uncertainty. In Psalm 46, your word reminds us of your promise. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. During this very uncertain time for all of us, we bring before you the time of harvest that lies before us. We thank you that amidst all uncertainty surrounding the COVID-19 pandemic and the regulations that goes with it, we could still grow our grapes and prepare for the harvest. With these grapes in my hands, which represents the wine harvest in South Africa, we put this year's harvest in your strong and caring hands and ask for your heavenly blessings. 
We can just hope and pray, Lord, that when the grapes is ripe and the harvest is ready and the wine is produced, that the wine market and hospitality sector will also be ready and able to once again receive and enjoy the fruit of the harvest. Bless us also with the wisdom to make the right decisions in these uncertain times. We pray for your blessings today and we commit our own lives to you as our Lord. We also put the safety of our families and the harvest workers in your caring hands. We pray, Lord, have mercy on us. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, we now come to the point in the evening where we would like to present awards to people that have made exceptional contributions to our beloved industry. 
Diversity and Transformation Award. The Diversity and Transformation Award will go to a recipient who has set an inspirational example, paving the way for others through the elimination of barriers, contributing to the knowledge that others can use and having an overall effect on the image of the South African wine industry. The award goes to Ntsiki Biela of Aslina Wines. Pioneer winemaker Ntsiki Biela grew up in Mahlabatini in KwaZulu-Natal. She spent a year working as a domestic worker before being awarded a scholarship to study winemaking at Stellenbosch University where she graduated in 2003 with a BSc in Agriculture, Viticulture and Oenology. After 13 years as winemaker at Stelikaya Wines, Ntsiki started as Lina Wines, named after her grandmother. During her career, Ntsiki has been fortunate to work in Bordeaux and was invited to make a wine for the winemaker's collection, an opportunity afforded only to a handful of winemakers from around the world. Ntsiki has earned many accolades, such as being named Women Winemaker of the Year by Lantbo Vietblad, one of the top 20 most innovative women in food and drinks by Fortune magazine, as well as one of the top 15 women in wine to watch by Food and Wine magazine in the USA. Ntsiki's wines have received numerous awards, including gold medals from the Michelangelo Wine and Spirit Awards, as well as gold from the Sakura Awards in Japan. Ntsiki also is a highly regarded wine judge and a board member of the Pinotage Youth Development Academy. As an inspiring winemaker pioneer, Ntsiki Biela is an admirable recipient of the Diversity and Transformation Award. Appreciation and Wine Advancement Award The Wine Appreciation and Wine Advancement Award has been conceptualized to pay tribute to individuals who have made noticeable contributions towards the image of wine and the responsible use of it as well as building the image of the South African wine industry as a whole through their width of reach. The award goes to Michael Freejohn. Renowned wine expert, writer, judge, commentator and entrepreneur, Michael Freejohn has over four decades of experience in the industry and is one of the most widely consulted authorities on South Africa's wine sector. Michael is South Africa's most highly regarded international wine judge, the country's most widely consulted liquor industry authority and one of South Africa's leading wine writers, also known as the Wine Wizard. Chairman of the Old Mutual Trophy Wine Show since 2002 and of the Old Mutual Trophy Spirits Show since 2019, he was the first international co-chairman of the International Wine Challenge and the past chairman of the Six Nations Challenge. Formerly Special Advisor to the Minister of Agriculture, he is Visiting Professor of Wine Business at the University of Cape Town, where he also teaches and directs the Wine Judging Academy. Amongst his awards, Freejohn has been the recipient of the Louis Ruderer International Wine Columnist of the Year Award in 2012. As a globally recognized wine judge, spokesperson, expert and influencer, Michael Freejohn is a fitting recipient of the Wine Appreciation and Wine Advancement Award. Viticulture and Wine Creation Award The newly created Viticulture and Wine Creation Award is to be presented to an individual who has developed new ideas, technologies and methods within the winemaking industry. Implementing and transferring these ideas and methodologies, changing mindsets and benefiting the South African wine industry overall. The award 
goes to Johan Reineke of Johan Reineke Wines. Johan Reineke's approach to winemaking has certainly seen the implementation of new ideas and methodologies, and he is widely regarded as one of the first pioneers of organic and biodynamic wine farming in South Africa. Johan was pursuing his postgraduate studies in environmental ethics when he took over farming from his mother as a student. His experience, first as a farm worker and later as a farmer, together with the insights he gained during his studies, led him to start farming in a more environmentally friendly manner. By the year 2000, he switched the family farm Uitzicht to organic. And a few years later, the farm was one of the first internationally certified organic and biodynamic vineyards in South Africa. The inclusion in the 2008 London International Wine Trade Fair's list of top 100 organic wine producers is just one of many forms of recognition Reineke wines have received. In 2020, Tim Atkin named Johan Grower of the Year in his South Africa special report. As the true champion of organic viticulture in South Africa, Johan Reineke is a worthy recipient of the Viticulture and Wine Creation Award. The person or institution who receives the 1659 Award for Visionary Leadership should have made an essential contribution towards the industry, of which there must be substantial evidence. The industry, or a specific aspect thereof, must have been influenced positively by it and must have a lasting impact with all indications of a special legacy. It must be worthy of praise and significantly changed the thinking and or lives of people. There must be clear indications of intellectual conceptualizing the idea, which must be creative, innovative and unique, and already been proved in practice. It should encourage and inspire others in the industry to do the same or even better. The 1659 Award for Visionary Leadership goes to Bayers Truter. Winemaker, wine personality and owner of Bayers Kloof Wine Farms, Bayers Truter is the founder and chairman of the Pinotage Association, which he established in 1995 and has been dubbed Mr. Pinotage, as well as the Prince of Pinotage. It is Bayers' passion for pinotage which defines his legacy for the South African wine industry. Bayers graduated from the University of Stellenbosch in 1979 with a degree in BSc Agriculture with Oenology and Viticulture and initially worked for the Fruit Board as part of his bursary commitments. At the age of 25, he became the winemaker at Kanonkop and he undoubtedly made his name and established it on the global wine map producing this estate's fine wines. While winemaker there, he won numerous prestigious awards, including the highly coveted Chateau Pichon Longueville Contest de l'Anon Trophy for the world's best red blend with his iconic Paul Sauer 1991 Bordeaux blend. He also won the Robert Mondavi Trophy at the International Wine and Spirit Competition in 1991 for best winemaker in the world. It was during his tenure at Canonco that Bayers also pioneered the development of a winemaking practice that sees manual punch downs every two hours as opposed to six to eight hours, a method that produces optimum results for color and tannin extraction. As a true wine legend who has placed South Africa's Pinotage varietal on the global map, Bayers Truter is a fitting recipient of the 1659 Award for Visionary Leadership.
van die eerste oog opslag af was, het net besef, hier is iemand wat, wat um, warm is, en nemend is, in in omgeef vir, vir die mere mens. Bayers is, a, a, soos die Engels sal sê, a visionary, hy sien vooruit. Sy planne is nie altyd uitvoerbaar, maar hy het altyd planne, en dit is altyd groot planne, en uh, wat om uniek gemaakt het, ook om nou leer ken het, as a mede, as a collega, as a mede uh, aandeelhouwer in Bayers Kloof, is, is dat dit die minder geraak het nie, dat dit meer geraak met tyd. Wat my opval is, dat hy dink nie net aan homself nie, hy vat, die, hy vat sy vriende in die bedrijf saam. Hy is nederig, hy is uh, iemand wat sy fout kan herken, maar hy gee ongelooflik om vir sy mere mens. Uh, dit kan jy sien dier al die, dier al die uh, uh, organisaties waar hy betrokken is, uh, organisaties wat hy help stig het, organisaties waarvoor hy geld gee, um, die Five Foundation, uh, wat, wat by hy so groot hand in het, en hy gee om, hy gee rarig om, dit is nie, dit is nie, dit is nie net oorverblindrui nie. Um, as jy die, die man leer ken, dan kom jy achter, hier is, is, is iemand genuin, soos die Engelsman sou sê. Daar is niks uh, kunstmatig eindelijk aan hom nie. Wat hy sê, dit uh, bedoel hy, en wat hy bedoel, dit sê hy. Bayers is seker die naaste ding aan Jack Russell. Nog niemand het vir Jack Russell gesê, hy is nie groot nie. En Bayers het die typische hardnekkigheid van die Jack Russell. Hy dink hy is die grootste hond in die pak. Ek dink, uh, ek lid op een stadium, maar Bayers klof is nie, maar Weet, hy moet nou, hy gaan die bankrot, die plaas bankrot maak dier net alles weg te gee. Want elke overal instap, as dit nou een uh, ouwe thuis van koek en naap af is, en of dit nou een uh, 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 kinderkrans het saamtrek is in, in die noordweste, hy, hy gee en hy help en hy probeer ondersteun. Hy het nie een einde aan omgeen nie, so hy is een omgeen mens nie net vir die mense van die wijnbedrijfie, maar allemaal wat hy mee in aanraking kom, en dit denk ek is een van sy grootste baat is, dat hy goed het gins wat hy uitdra. Meneer sy goed uit, jy weet, daar is so bitter baie wat hy vir ons doen. Bayers het een manier om om, om, om jy altemaal in te leef in situasies, en um, en dit is gebaseer op, as ek sê, op geloof, op liefde vir wijn, liefde vir mense, um, ja, ongelooflike mens, en soos allemaal weet wat al met hom te doen gekryd, is baie lekker, lekker om tyd saam met hom te spandeer, as een positieve energie, wat, uh, wat aansteeklik is. My eerste contact met Bayers was as een student gewees, ek was in, um, in een manskoshuis gewees, hy is visser, en daarna was ek in een privaat wijk pieke gewees, en Bayers was op die stadium, uh, die koshuisvader van Pieke gewees, so ons het, uh, het baie um, lekker, lekker gekeier. Ek was, was uh, soos ek sê, my eerste ervaring was in een keierplek op Stellenbos gewees, en op die stadium snaak genoeg um, het Bayers nog kloof koffie gehad vir teer. Ek weet nie of jylle dit kan onthou nie, kloof op die stoof lekker nie kan. Het is lekker om iemand met die type ervaring te vraag, jy weet, wat denk jy van hierdie wijn, en, en, en help een bykie so, en hy is altyd baie vrygevig met sy tyd, en met sy kennis. Dit wat Beheers my ook geleer het, vir my as, as, as een voorman, op die plaas, was vir my, vir dag, plik ek die vrucht daarvan. Ek, ek kan op enige plaas gaan werk, ek kan op enige stok werk, en alles die goed. Uh, om Beheers, alle mens altyd uit jou gemakzone uit, hy gee vir jou challenges, wat jy denk, jy kan nie het uh, achieve hy, maar aan die einde van die dag, as jy klaar is met dit wat hy vir jou opdracht gegeen, dan voel jy trots op jouself. En... Mens, leer, mens leer baie net so om na hom te luister. Weet, ook sy, uh, sy net sy jylle manier, hoe hy is so vriendelik, um, uh, baie, baie sla, snaaks ook, en hy vertel grappies, en uh, sy, sy jylle, sy is so relaxed, jy weet, en, en so, uh, vol vertrouwen ook, en dis, dis baie keer, dis lekker as jong mens wat nou in die industrie inkom, om so iemand te sien, uh, en jy, jy weet, baie keer aan wens jy, jy kan nou soos die oom wees. Ja, Beiers was nog altyd vir my een mentor, hy is iemand wat, jy weet, soos een pa is vir my, 
um, en die net enige probleme het, jy weet, ons het een uh, open door policy hier op Beierskloof, so, en die net enige iets is waar oor ons met hom wil praat, um, ons hoef die afsprake te maak hier, so sy deur is altyd oop vir ons. There is one thing that I think will live forever, um, that is the legacy that he's left South Africa with, with and that was putting pinotage onto the international map. Die werk wat hy ingesit op die kultie waar, waar niemand rarig waar gefokust op pinotage, van die wingerd af, recht dier, um, tot in die bottel, en ek praat nou van wijnmaaktechnieke, hoe om, om pinotage as een kultie waar beter te verstaan. Ek denk dit is tot vandag nog die grootste foute wat mense maak, is, is dat hulle pinotage probeer aan teers as ander rooi kultie waar. Maar hoe beheers gefokus het, hoe om pinotage recht, recht te hanteer in die wingerd, in die kelder, om een stijl te maak, wat vandag aanvaar word as wereldklas. Hy is werkelijk een pionier vir wijnmaak gewees, en specifiek vir pinotage, uh, wat in die daad toe Beiers die wereld gesochte prijs vir die beste wijn in die wereld IWEC gewen het, was uh, pinotage nie die cultivar van kese vir meeste mense nie. Maar uh, hy het het uitgelig en hy het het nooit opgegeen nie, hy het nooit nooit opgegeen nie, en hy die, hy het pinotage werkelijk, uh, soos om Tuimpie by Liesel sê, op die map gesit. Ek dink hy het nog al baie in gemeen met Simon van der Stel, as die mens nou dink aan wat hy gedoen het. Simon het al in 1680 half miljoen van het stokke in die Constantia Vallei geplant. Baiers het die hele wijnbedrijf gemotiveer om pinotage te praat en te drank. Bayers het so baie gedoen vir pinotage. Um, en ja, hy het sy, hy het sy handelsmerk gevestig daarin, maar hoekom nie? Pinotage is een bemark, bemarkbare handelsmerk. Hy is Mr. Pinotage. Um, en ek dink na syke pinotage wat in sy aarde loop. <laughs> ek het so in my jare op Willekrans, was pinotage ons enigste cultivar wat ons verbouw het. En ek het by hom gaan kers opsteek. En hy het geen geheime gehad om vir my alles te sê wat hy weet en trend. Hy kon alles by hom getap het. En ons het van die uh, wegtrek af, het ons nogal een redelike mooi pinotage gemaakt, wat ek nogal trots op was. Toe ek vir Beiers leer ken het, toe was daar rondom die tyd, toe daar so pinotage, so een bitter uh, smaakie gelos het in jou mond, uh, en hy het al die navorsing gaan doen oor wat, wat is die oorzaak, weet, uh, um, om die cultivar te beskerm, maar ook om, om, om die bedrijf te leer oor wat aangaan. Weet, hy het ongelooflik baie navorsing gedoen om, om dit te kon, kon uitwerk en om, om op antwoord uit te kom. Laat het nie een cultivar ding is, maar laat het weet, eindelijk een, een, een bakteriële probleem is. Hy het een liefling woord in Engels en dis research. Hy het altyd, altyd iwers in sy proe gebruik en hy, hy moet research doen. Maar baie sy research was, baie sy boeken volgeskryf. En dit is sy pars aantekeninge, dit is statistische data, dit is om wat hy waarneem in die omgeving. Hy het syke leersvol, rakkevol. Maar ok, ons weet moes nou, dit is nie eindig research nie, maar die feit dat hy uh, ongelooflike kennis het van elke oesjaar waarmee hy betrokken was, maak hom eindig uniek. Om by ons as die king af pinnetaas, het hy altyd hierdie gesegde om te sê vir mense, um, Pinnetas is soos a, a lion's heart, a woman's tongue, and if you consume enough, you can fight the devil. Beiers het een onwrikbare geloof in sy skepper. Uh, hy, syke meer as die meeste, het oorgenoeg van sy eie lief en leed moes ervaar. Dit was nie makkelijk nie. Maar as jy met Beiers praat en wat ek en hy baie doen op bel mekaar vroeg ochend, dan sê jy altyd, Almela, alles wat recht kom. Het uh, is een diepsie in hy. En hy is baie na by my hart, hy is een liefelike christen man. En hy leef sy christenskap uit. So daar is baie facette van hom wat, wat, wat rarig waar, ek dink op, op verskillende vlakke werk, as jy nou dink aan kerkmens. Hy is baie liefde preek, hy is graag meer die geleentheid wil hebben te preek. Um, maar hy is ook op, oprechte christen, wedergebore christen en, en kerkmens, en dit is maar die fondatie van die rest van sy leven. 
Beers is een godsvreesende beginselvaste man um, wat afgaan aan sy kinders en sy kleinkinders. Um, en hy het een rustige wijsheid en een zachte manier om het aan iemand oor te dra en met die nodige gravitas ook. En altijd met de vonkel in sy oog. En hy het vir my geleer dat ook kan lekker wijn drink en een christen wees en dat het 100% reg is so. Um, dis is een balans wat ek hy gehelpskep het in my leven wat ek voor baie dankbaar is. Daar is a, heel waarschijnlijk die belangrijkste eigenschap wat hy baie van het. Jy krijgt wijnmakers wat glo, glo hulle het al die antwoorde, maar dis ego. Beiers, by Beiers is daar altijd die tikkie, die klein stikkie twyfel wat maakt dat hij terugdraai en weer gaan kyk en weer proe en nog vraag vraag. En dit maak vir my my boek een wonderlijke wijnmens. Enige persoon wat in wat Pinotaas ken en, en nie net uit Afrika nie, maar in die wereld, het respecteer die cultivar vandag baie meer as gevolg van werk wat Beiers betrokken by was. Hulle sê, Beiers streeter is die, is die king of Pinotaas is as hy die king van Pinotas is, dan is Beiers kloof sy paleis. So ek is baie blij dat ek in sy paleis die skinker kan wees. Stout, ja, definitief stout, um, wat net wees, hy is een mens, soos enige een van ons, is nie, is, hy is nie abnormaal nie, hy is net menselik. Hy is, a, hy is a ondeende, blir die maniekie, en uh, hy kan somtijds stout ook raak, jy het. So Beierstreeter, a man for all seasons. Aan die einde van die dag is hy een vriend, hy is een collega, hy is, a, hy is iemand na wie ek kan opsien en, en hy is een goeie voorbeeld vir allemaal van ons in die wijnbedrijf. En um, rarig groot legende. Ek het nog nooit een beter baas as hy gaat nie. Ek dink ook nie, ek wil een heen nie. So ek dink al so iemand moet nou hier aankom met een beter aanbieding, miskien een hoer salaris sal ek het definitief bedank by jy skloof as my aftree word. So Beiers, I think, has walked deep steps in the South African wine industry and I think this award is well deserved for his input that will live for many years to come still. Dit, dit maak my hart rechtig blij. Ek dink van al die mense wat ek nou op die oomlik kan dink, ek dink hy verdien die toekenning, die meeste. Courage is not always the role. Sometimes it is the quiet voice at the end of the day saying, I will try again tomorrow. And that is almost by us. First of all, I want to thank you for the privilege and honor you have bestowed upon me to receive this prestigious award. I also want to thank Dr. Messina, the chairman of the Groot Constantia Board, the Board of Directors of Constantia, the CEO of Groot Constantia, John Odea, the sponsors, Eunice, the organizer, and everybody that contributed to the success and made tonight's function possible. Not only is receiving this award a privilege and an honor, but also a very humbling experience. Humbling because you realize that there is such a lot of people that contributed towards the success of the wine industry that never will receive this for all. Humbling because you realize that receiving this award, you become part of the history of South African wine industry. Although virtual, I can imagine how lovely it must be tonight at Groot Constantia, a farm not only known for its quality wines, but also for its contribution towards the history of South Africa. Two names came to mind immediately, namely Jan van Riebeek. In 1652, an entry in his diary described Constantia as a place with rich fertile soils, water from the rustling rivers. I'm, I can see that the Oswald Bula, what now noch a betrokken is, that elke dag zal zien. And Simon van der Stel, in 1679, he was appointed the commander and later the governor of the Cape of Good Hope. By 1618, Constantia was planted with 100,000 vines. A quote of my good friend, Dr. Jan Boland, could see sums up Simon van Estel. 
the first man in South Africa who understood where the wine feels at home. It shows its best and the true value of the land. Why, thank you, Jan. I also want to share with you part of the history that contributed towards the development of and success of the South African wine industry, the Pinotar story. Pinotar owes its existence to Abraham Isaac Pirold. We can call Professor Pirold the father of Pinotar. He made the cross in 1925 and it was between two varieties. It was Pinot Noir and Sinsau. And uh, in his diary, it says Pinot Fin crossed with Hermetyke. Now Hermetyke is a synonym for Sinsau, Afrikaans synonym. And the Pinot Noir, Pinot Fin, is the first clone of Pinot Noir. There's 42 clones and it's clone 115. He wanted to create a local variety with the best characteristics of both parents, the longevity and quality of Burgundy, with the drinkability, easy to grow, disease resistant qualities of Sinsau. Professor Pierrot never tasted the first wine that was made at Elsenburg in 1941 by the lecturer C.T. de Waal. Two of the most outstanding abilities of Pinotas. Pirald would never knew about, or maybe he had it in his mind when he planted this specific cross. The two is versatility. With Pinotage you can make a white wine, you can make a easy drinking wine, you can make a full bodied uh, oaked wine, plus you can make sweet wine. The second is the aging potential of Pinotage. Those who had the opportunity to taste the Lanzarac Pinotazas of the 60s will be astounded. The 63 was the first wine I gave 20 out of 20 points. I have to confess of big, as the South African guys would say, I gave a Jevray Chamber turn 25 out of 20. But the girl that was washing the, the owner's car outside the tasting room had a bikini on and she did the tasting for me also. So sometimes things influence your taste a lot. Lanzarac Pinotage 59 was the first bottled and labeled Pinotage. I could dwell on Pierrot and the Pinotage history for ages, but I have to end off this part of the history. Pierrot was a phenomenal man. He could write and speak eight languages fluently. He was the first professor in Viti and Viniculture and also the Dean of the Agriculture faculty at the University of Stellenbosch. He achieved his PhD degree in chemistry at the University of Halle under, under Salle in Germany, summa cum laude. The government asked him to source new varieties from Europe and he brought back 160 varieties under which was Balinka and Chardonnay one of the most outstanding agriculturists in the world. Whenever you talk about agriculture and the wine industry, you have to mention the name Abraham Isaac Pirot. In 1995, the Pinotage Association was formed at KWV in the Paul. Because of experimentation, this this dissemination of knowledge, the APSA Top 10 competition and numerous other marketing endeavors, the quality and price of the wine has grown tremendously over the years. For me, the biggest and most exciting change, the winemakers and viticulturists have become in sync with their terroirs. They know where they're coming from. They know what's going on around them. They are not scared to show it in their wines. In the last few years, it is in the order of the day to see regionality expressed in different styles and flavors in their wines. Pinotas have grown from a local variety to a world player that can and are already competing with the best wines in the world. On a more personal note, I'm regularly faced with a question, how did you achieve what you achieved in life? And I answer it usually like a good Afrikaans preacher in three points. Firstly, everything up to now was only by the grace of God. Some people say, but you're lucky. Luck is also the grace of the Lord. 
Others say you have been at the right place on the right time. Again, grace. To make a good wine, there are two critical elements. The soil and the climate and both are God-given elements. Again, the grace of the God. Of God. Secondly, shoe leather. How many pairs of shoes have you walked through to sell and tell the story of wine? How many times did you miss out not being next to the fire with your family at night time because you were doing wine tastings? And how many weeks and how many months have you been on the road nationally and internationally to do food and wine pairings and to tell people about wine and pinotage? A youngster asked um Frans Malang, the late um Frans, also a doyen of the industry. Um Frans, I see your wines all over the world. And um Frans said, have a look at my shoes. They knack it. And it's only because I walk the streets of Cape Town to sell my wine. Everything shoe leather. Thirdly, it was trail dust. The well-known cowboy writer and philosopher said, Trail dust is thicker than blood. I was definitely, it's definitely not a one man show. It was a team effort of all the farm workers, viticulturists, winemakers, and press and wine consumers. The dust of the roads I've traveled with them are still clinging to me. In the beginning, I said to receive this prestigious award is a privilege and honor, but also a humbling experience. But I want to add, that it's also a motivation for me to do more, to invest more in the future of the South African wine industry and to do my everyday job that's Viti and Viniculture with much more passion from now on. I want to end with a saying or quote out of Nelson Mandela, my own and the wine industries and Constantia's diary. Never and never again, we will stop pursuing the quality of South African wine and grapes. Never and never again we will stop praising the Lord for the excellent soils and climate to make wine in South Africa. I thank you.